the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Is the power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please write it down. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. This is the highest dimension of power that any person in this side of God's kingdom can access. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please look at me. As powerful as laws and principles are, in themselves, they do not capture the complete power of God. There are dimensions of God's power that does not come just through understanding of laws. You will need to have an actual relationship with the Lord and you will need to pursue intimacy with God. That dimension of power is the reward that you get for intimacy with God. That is the dimension where supernatural power resides. The power to do impossible things supernaturally. So I can give somebody by the operation of laws, Panadol and whatever it is, and the person can recover. But then the person can come and with one word, I can say in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing now? All power, but different dimensions of power. And the person is healed. Someone can follow the normal laws of wealth, respectfully so, and he's building gradually, but I can come and speak prophetically over him and say by this time tomorrow and program a climate of favor and someone just says, do you know what? I'm giving you 100 million. Now look at that kind of thing. I have superimposed, I have brought another dimension of power. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The power that comes through intimacy is, is, a, is marvelous in its operation. Because this one, it's not what you receive with your hands. This one is a heart connection. This is your, your, your pressing into God. I love you for who you are. Your growth in the spirit. Growth through the word. Growth in the place of prayer. Are we together? Your passionate pursuit of God. Show me a man that loves God sincerely. Show me a man devoted and dedicated. Who will open up his heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I show you a man who is about to stumble across genuine supernatural power. Drugs. There is no drug we know today that can raise the dead. It can only help those who are alive. Even medical science will tell you. Are we together? Once someone is confirmed clinically dead and after a while it is true that the person is dead completely. Even the doctors, even the consultants. And we celebrate them and appreciate them greatly for their contributions. But they will stand in honest admission that we have done our best. This person has gone. Yet, ah, there is an ability. The Bible tells us that when it has to do with that dimension of power, even death is not the end. Now, we may not have entered into the fullness of that experience yet, but we must admit that it is a possibility because the Bible says it. And Jesus showed it. He died. Jesus died. Jesus ate bread. Oh. Jesus ate fish. But bread and fish could not bring him back. But if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Listen. I know that as it is now we have not mastered raising the dead. We lose loved ones here and there. But can I tell you in the midst of your pain settle it that there is still a dimension of God's power. And I assure you before Jesus returns, there will be men who will embody these dimensions. There are men who are pressing into God sincerely. We may be crawling like babies, but we are still moving. Deeper levels of intimacy, deeper levels in prayer, deeper levels with the word. And from one level to the other, we are stepping into the prophetic. We are stepping into dimensions. Someday, all it takes is one man, one man to dive into that river. Dive into that river of power. Listen, let me tell you how the economy of God works. He does not take a crowd into new experiences. 
usually it's just one person one person who will push and say lord i will not rest one person the prophetic is wonderful but this is not the end oh god there has to be an ability to raise the dead with the level of mastery you use to heal headache all it takes is for one person now let me tell you there is a side effect if you become that one person you will be persecuted greatly because men as a track record persecute their saviors but your sustainability will begin to reproduce your kind and sooner or later you will find out go and read about the right brothers if you were alive in their days you would join those insulting them and say go and look for something intelligent to do with your life but they remained Go and study on Michael Faraday. Go and study on Nikola Tesla. Go and study on all these men. Today we celebrate their inventions, but they lived lonely life. They were the mockery of society. People looked at them like outcasts, but there was something within their spirit. The same way someone here, you cannot describe it, but you know the Holy Ghost has been telling you. Some of you have seen it in your dreams. You have seen it in your vision. This cannot be it. There is still a higher level of power. Thank God for the miracle services. Thank God for falling down and standing up. But we are talking about tapping into the powers of the age to come. Levels of realities that the world has not seen. I don't know about you, but this has been my lifelong pursuit. There are things I've only seen in the spirit. And my desire is that in my lifetime, that we will be able to bring some of these realities here and now. Kai. read your Bible and watch men Joshua tells the son stand still that one is not a law because nobody has replicated it that one oh, is not a law how do you look at the son and tell it to stand still ah. Moses looks listen listen we brag and say we're in the New Testament, yet we don't come close to what this man did. Listen, I'm telling you, my spirit is fired up right now. A man, an ordinary man, leading 2.5 million people, he stands at the Red Sea, a stammerer, and he holds his stick and drops it on that water. And it's not a parable, it parted heater and teeter. Hear me. Your Bible talks about a man called Noah who did not study architecture, yet he built an ark. It was not a parable. Have you built any structure that can host all the animals in the world? And that, listen, the best of the structures in the world have been victims of tsunamis, have been victims of all kinds of tornadoes and volcanoes. But that which Noah built, no pillar to the ground, standing on water, yet it did not sink. What technology did he deploy? Listen, many of us here are science-based. Prove to me that you can build an ark of gopher wood with a lot of space inside are we together and put all the animals in the wall that weight must make it sink are we together all the animals in the world and then the heavens give rain and the earth also gives rain and yet it does not capsize it does not turn around come on There are realms beyond science. There are realms beyond physics. There are realms that only intimacy can take you there. Please believe us, hear me. I speak to an intellectual generation. I respect your intellect. But there are realms and virgin dimensions in the spirit that it takes hunger and a press that men can access power Power that science cannot explain. But to There are dimensions of grace. I'm telling you there is a generation. Every generation will not fail. I assure you there is a generation that will get it. There is a generation that will get it. There is a generation that will get it. It is a hunger in the heart of God. Every generation will not miss it. I have watched the videos of God's generals by the privilege of God's grace. I have heard of the things that they did. I 
have read about the church in Nigeria the mighty men and women who God used and we salute everything they have done but like every generation we also saw their limitations I'm telling you there is a generation that will demonstrate God to the earth that will dumbfound principalities and powers living walking miracles living walking miracles living walking miracles there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be this hear me there are many of you beyond level one businessman I know you have learned all the laws of business but can I tell you that there are still demon spirits and they have the power to manipulate those laws so that even in your obedience of them they may not seem to happen this is where this other dimension comes the dimension through intimacy that you can speak with one word and shift the spiritual climate of a territory. I know this because it will happen. I have seen it many times in my visions and I don't know who will avail himself to say, Lord, there has to be a generation that will get it. There has to be a generation that will get it. Hallelujah. Watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, is that in your Bible? It says, shall he also do? Then it says, greater works. Hear me. Now, respectfully speaking, I salute all of us together for what we are doing. But when you hear me tell you that we are still, the version of spirituality we are in now is the version of typewriter technologically. There are still levels to enter. It's because of our slow place that is garnished by a lot of pride and arrival mentality. Thank God for the little we have seen. But believe me, I'm not just trying to be humble. I am telling you there are realms that we have not stepped into. Where we access the powers of the age to come. Men who become like God upon the earth. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you saw a flood about to wash a nation and you stood and said, Flood, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Listen, we have so recycled the little results that we have that we have built a camp of mediocrity around it. No. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who is satisfied with falling down and standing up. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who just wants to give one prophecy, one word of knowledge. Tonight's message is not for someone who just wants to give Greek and Hebrew. We are talking of men who become living wonders, conduits of kingdom possibilities. Hallelujah. We brag about seeing angels. We brag about going to the realm of the spirit. We brag about meeting demons. We brag about meeting Jesus. But we cannot see the power that is connected to that intimacy. Because every time people met Jesus in the Bible, they came back with something they could prove. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to mock or be sarcastic. But I have read books of people who supposedly claim that they met Jesus every day for a long time. 
the Jesus you read in this Bible, find out those who met him for three and a half years. Look at what he left with them. They turned the world upside down. Whoever met Jesus and went back the same. Tell me one person who met Jesus. And yet we say we have met him. Yet we claim like we are drinking tea every day with him. And after all of that, the corresponding manifestation of power. Now, I have read my Bible. When Paul met him, look what happened to Paul. Paul, a, a hunger was in him that at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, all he could say is that I may know him. Let me meet him one more time. Let him do something to me. How about Peter? How about John? The madman at Gadara, he didn't have a vision of him every day. He met him once and became an evangelist. Can I tell you, we must re-examine the Jesus we have been seeing. Because I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Let me tell you the truth. I have read my Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. I have met Jesus and I know what happened to me. When you meet Jesus, there must be proof that you met him. The glory that emanates from your life. Find out what happened when Moses met him for 90 days. Moses did not even know his face was shining. Is when he came down, men said, what is this? They said, what, does it, what kind of glow does it take to use a veil in the afternoon? Ladies and gentlemen, this revival thing we keep talking about, Ba, we're only going to waste our time if we don't mean business. A genuine encounter with the God of the Bible a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit must leave a, a provable deposit of God within you that you can take back as a gift. Listen, we're ordinary men. There are times that some of these, my lovely children, come to me and I'm tempted to give them gifts. Sometimes I can bring out 10 naira. This is me, a man. Yet I know the value of seeing how I can respond to them. How much more the God of heaven. And he sat with you and spoke with you Joshua Selman, you saw him. Is it true? Where is the proof? And you have the effrontery to say light left him and came to you. Where is the light? Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know? In his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. Hear me. There were men and women in the Bible who manifested certain dimensions of grace. Many of them have died today, but they left their dealings with God. The journey did not start for them by learning laws. It started by a pursuit of God. The prophet could look at the woman. How many of us can speak like Elisha? Madam, what do you want us to do for you? How can a man speak like that? Should I talk to the president for you? Don't ask me how. I know my ways to reach him. And she says, no, I live among my people. All of a sudden... The servant comes to say, I notice this woman has no child. And cheaply, this is not experimentation. The prophet looks at her and says, according to the time of life. He never said, call on me and update me with the result. Mm -mm. One statement. These ones are not laws. This is power that comes through intimacy. That someone comes to meet you and says, man of God, this is the last opportunity. There is somebody dying in the hospital. That's not when you should start teaching principles of friendliness or administration and say, you see, the dieting is a very serious thing. That is wonderful only when the person is going to leave. This guy is dying. Let me tell you the kind of men that God is looking for. People who will stand and say, let that sick person come that you will know there is a prophet in Israel. And with one pronunciation, Naman, 
no matter how long your leprosy is it is about to turn go and wash in Jordan seven times does not make sense but this is a realm higher than science and Naaman returns back and is healed Jesus is strolling around Nain and he's seen a widow who is about to bury her child haven't buried her husband and Jesus says stop what is going on here and the woman is crying and he says drop that coffin down my goodness can I tell you man of God the day three dead people confirmed medically come back to life in your church whether it's poster or Facebook you don't no matter what it is it is security that will have to protect you because of the way people will weary you I respect church growth principles but there are superior principles the manifestation of genuine power from heaven the Bible says where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather can I tell you there are people who pack full stadiums because footballers are about to play football and they pay for it and they smuggle their way through the space and they are happy when something spectacular begins to happen most of the miracles that happen to us are still within the realm of controversy that is the reason why it is not compelling enough did it really happen this wheelchair did the person really stand up this headache did it how are we sure all that there, there there are levels called notable miracles manifestations of the power of god that even the sanhedrin council can say this one we cannot say anything against it power from on high that this woman was barren and suddenly comes with four children ah then just when you are trying to say some manipulation a dead body comes back to life five blind people Look at how this blindness that was struggling to open people's eyes. Is your eye open? The person said, my eye is not open. No, I'm not seeing. Yet, there was a prophet in the Bible who played with blindness and sight in a moment called Elisha. Lord, open his eyes. He opened the servant's eyes. Close the eyes of an army. Their eyes were closed. Take them to Samaria. Open their eyes. Look at, he was playing with it. That there is a formula. Listen, I'm not just entertaining you except you are not a believer what did this man know what did this man carry today if one blind eye is open whether verified or not we are so excited and thank God for it but what did the prophet know what did Elijah know that he could laugh at the prophets of Baal if you saw someone come with a charm right now a confirmed herbalist you say apostle where are you come and stand close to me as we pray because of fear yet Elijah was laughing and said call Baal maybe there was a time business was failing they could not catch any fish watch Jesus if I were the one I would now start teaching principles of fishing and there is a place for that I taught you come in the night put your net and allow the fish to just play around it are we together bait them with feed and then you come and drag it and you catch fish that is the principle of fishing but watch what Jesus does he says little children have you any catch and Peter says we've been struggling what do you mean by have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side game over cast your nets to the right side it does not matter whether, whether the fish what if that grace can come on you as a man of God to speak over your business people? Do you know what can happen to them? You are not endorsing laziness, but that this guy is in debt already. It is not a principle that will bring him out of debt. A family, listen, when the prophet met a woman who was in debt, he did not share principles. Now, don't get me wrong. There are principles that can bring her when she when she her debt issue was solved he now said go and sell and live with the rest he now introduced principles there is a power of God that is invested in buying and selling but with respect to this tragedy now you need a higher level of power shut your door and begin to pour the oil shut your door listen if we do not access this level of power, can I tell you, the devil is going to start using diseases like cancer, HIV, all these satanic diseases and he's going to waste a generation. 
There are real spirits that are oppressing God's people. There are mysterious occurrences happening to men in business. A man will build a house that he knows he built well. Some wind will just come and the whole house collapses. That is not an architectural problem. That is witchcraft. The solution is not just to add cement. The solution is to understand the mysteries of priesthood. That somebody can go and stand there and say in the name of the Lord Jesus, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Sit down. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be. Holy God's fire! For